The final capital budgeting technique we will look at is the annual rate of return. It is based directly on accrual accounting data rather than on cash flows. It indicates the profitability of a capital expenditure by dividing expected annual net income by the average investment. Assume that Reno Company is considering an investment of $130,000 in new equipment. The new equipment is expected to last five years and have a zero salvage value at the end of its life. Reno uses the straight line method of depreciation. If the company invests in this new equipment, they expect the following annual revenues and cost. The expected annual net income is $13,000. The value at the end of the useful life is equal to the asset salvage value, if any. For Reno, average investment is $65,000, and that is found by taking the original investment of $130,000 and adding it zero because there's no salvage value, and then simply dividing by two. The expected annual rate of return for Reno's investment in new equipment is 20%. It is calculated by taking $13,000 and dividing it by $65,000. Management then compares the annual rate of return with its required rate of return for investments of similar risk. The required rate of return is generally based on the company's cost of capital. The decision rule is a project is acceptable if its rate of return is greater than management's required rate of return. It is unacceptable when the reverse is true. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video.